So suppose we have a surface in three-dimensional space, and I'm just going to draw a pretty simple looking surface to begin with. Uh, remember, and this, this surface is, doesn't have to be positioned in any particular way in three-dimensional space, but remember that we have a function or a, a vector field called the Gauss map, which at every point on this surface, it assigns a normal vector, and that normal vector is somehow related to, the, to a parameterization of the surface. So if we have uh, some parameter domain uv, and we have our vector function r, which assigns uh, points in the parameter domain to points on the surface, then at every point, say here in the domain, corresponds to a point on the surface, and depending on how the parameterization works, uh, this will assign either a normal vector that points outward like this from the surface, or maybe it'll point back inward, right? So it's possible that this normal vector could point inward like this. But the idea is that um, at every point on the surface there's a normal vector, and this normal vector we call nu of uv, and we define this to be r sub u crossed with r sub v. All right, and as you move from point to point, a couple things change about this normal vector. Number one, uh, the normal vector's direction obviously changes because as you move along a surface that's not um, that's not flat, it's gonna the normal direction is gonna change, right? And so up here, maybe we have this one. Maybe as we slide over this way, we have this one. And notice I'm drawing these with different lengths as well because that's the other thing that can change as you move along the surface. The normal vectors can become either bigger or longer or shorter. And one of our criteria for the surfaces that we care about that we want to integrate over is that we want uh, the normal vectors to never be zero at any point. Okay, So one of our criteria is that if S is smooth, or we define, I should say, S to be smooth, if and only if this normal vector is not equal to zero at any points on S. Right, and so in some ways that's a that's a property of the parameterization, but we kind of group the surface and the parameterization together, and we just think of this as one property. Now, one of the reasons for doing this is that then we can normalize this normal vector field, and that's two different usages of the word normal, but we can take all these normal vectors and we can say, all right, well, we know they're not zero, so we can divide through by the length and just make sure that we have what's called a unit normal vector field. Um, so all these vectors, these orange ones I've drawn, these we call lowercase n with a hat. And these are just equal to our normal vector nu divided by the length of the vector nu. Okay. And now these vectors, these all have length one. So the length of n by definition, by construction, is equal to 1 for our smooth surface. And the only thing that changes for these vectors is the direction of the vector, right? So, so the direction that it's pointing. And as you move along any curve on this surface, so say you move along here to here, then if only the direction is changing, then you would hope that you could just slide this vector along and it's, you know, its direction would change as you slide along. That would tell you something about how the surface is curving, right? But it's possible for certain surfaces that this sliding along a curve uh, could have a problem, right? And so let's think of a surface where that would happen. And by the way, the surface I've drawn is very nice. As you slide along from point to point, these vectors kind of slide along with you, and that I've drawn it pretty bad there. But the idea there is that the normal vector field n, the unit normal vector field here, would be continuous. As you move from point to point, the direction changes continuously. All right, so this normal vector field being continuous. Now, um, remember the other thing that we have <coughs> is that you can regard this normal vector field as the as a vector field that's given by this map called the Gauss map of the surface, G sub S, which takes points on the surface and assigns to them the normal vector to each point. So this is called the Gauss map. Now how is that any different than just calling this N? It's not, all right? But Gauss is famous and deserves some recognition here. And you will see this in applications as you move forward. The Gauss map is extremely important. So we can refer to the vector field of the unit normal vectors as the Gauss map or, or just the unit normal vector field, either way. But either way we say this. In this case, the Gauss map is continuous. The normal vector field is continuous. They're both continuous here.
All right, well, let's look at another example. This example is called uh, Mobius Strip. Again, it gets a name, so it's a famous example. You can look this one up if you want to see a better rendition of it. But the idea here is that to build a Mobius Strip, you start with a rectangular strip, and this is the Mobius strip is an example from an area of math called topology. And in topology, all the fabric that we work with, the fabric of of mathematics, we can we assume to be like infinitely stretchy and bendable, um, so, and we we can do anything we want to this stretchy material as long as we don't rip it or cut it. Okay, so what we're going to do with this stretchy material right now is we are going to take this rectangle and we are going to glue two edges of the rectangle together, but we're going to glue them in such a way that these two arrows that I've drawn match up with each other. So what do I have to do? I'm going to have to stretch this out. Uh, the stretch out the strip and then turn it around so that this arrow can be reversed when it gets glued to this one. All right, and the image that you get after doing this gluing is you get, bear with me for a second, you get a strip that has been twisted like this. So this is called a Mobius strip. And the idea is, it, it, once you do the gluing, you can no longer see where the gluing happened. But let's just assume that the gluing happened like right here. Okay, so there's there's the gluing, and we have glued them so that the two arrows are both pointing upward now. So I took the right-hand side, wrapped it around, and glued it to the left-hand side with the same orientation. And now, let's think about this. Let's look at what happens. As we travel along, let's say we start right here at this point, and we start traveling along the inside, so the side facing us of this strip. Look what's going to happen. We get over here, and at this little bend, we kind of reach a point where, at least from our perspective, as we're looking at this right now, we go to the underside. So now we are on the bottom of this strip, right? We've traveled along here. We don't know it. We, we don't feel any change, right? But as we walk along, we come back through, and we get back to the point that we started, but where are we, right? We started on the side that's facing us. Now we're on the bottom side, and as we keep, we stay on the bottom, we come back through, we're on the back side, right? So think about what effect this has on our normal vector, our Gauss map, right? So the, originally, let's say that our Gauss map is assigning our normal vectors so that they are pointing in toward the inside, like toward us, right? Toward how we're looking. But then as we reach this point where we kind of switch to, well, it's hard for me to draw this, but we switch to the perspective where now we are, uh, the curve is on the back side, right? Now the vectors are pointing downward. They're pointing away from us in some sense, okay? Especially as we start to make this turn back toward where we came from. And look what's happening here. At this point, our normal vectors are going to and here's the main point. Our normal vectors are pointing backwards now. So we started with the normal vectors pointing inward. We travel around. We haven't done anything wrong. Our path is perfectly continuous as far as the path goes. But when we get back to our starting point, our normal vector, our orientation, is not the same, right? We've gotten back to this point, and our, our vector is pointing in the other direction. That is, right there is a surefire sign of discontinuity, right? And so in this case, our Gauss map of the Mobius strip, I'll call it MO like this, the Gauss map of the Mobius strip is not continuous. All right, this is not continuous. And actually, there's no way to, to, uh, to parameterize the Mobius strip to get the Gauss map to be continuous. And so the idea here is that these two surfaces, this very simple just piece of you know regular surface that we're used to in calculus, this one had a continuous Gauss map right had a continuous gauss map we could assign the normal vectors to every point in a way that is continuous right this mobius strip which is not the most crazy thing to imagine the strip you can build one with wood paper uh, right now in your living room or wherever you're watching this video you can build this strip right so it's not a, an unrealistic surface but the Gauss map of this surface is not continuous, and there's no way to make it continuous. And the reason for that is that actually this Mobius strip is like a one-sided surface. What you could do is if you continued along, you could continue along a second time. So pick up, you know, continue at this point, 
continue traveling along the same path but now you're on the other side and eventually you'll get back here and you'll have um, you'll have your vector pointing in the same direction again and so it really takes two loops around this thing to get back to where you started but that doesn't change the fact that the Gauss map's not continuous okay so this Gauss map is not continuous and what we say then is that this surface is not orientable so um, and, and in general our definition is going to be exactly this so um, so a surface and this is typed in the notes but a surface is orientable if and only if this is a definition okay but if and only if it has a continuous Gauss map and what I mean by that is we can find a parameterization for which the Gauss map is continuous and the continuous is the key here even though I abbreviated it that's the key